Now this is a two-step process, but it's pretty easy. First, we're going to want a vector three. We'll just call it dir for direction. Now this is going to be equal to the target dot transform position minus r's. So r transform dot position. So two vector threes. We're going to call the normalized. Now what this is going to do is take the direction that he's in and the direction I'm in and it creates a vector and it makes it one unit long. So the next we're going to want to create a float and we'll just call this direction. And we're going to make this equal to vector 3. And we'll want the dot product so we'll use dot. Now we're going to use our dir from up top. Then we're also going to use our transform forward. So that moves us forward one unit. We'll take the measurement of us one unit forward. So you'll want to make sure these are the same length when you're comparing them. That's why we're using the transform forward. So each of these will be one unit long. Now let's put a debug statement and we'll check the direction. Now if we did, did everything right, this vector dot product should return a value between 1 and negative 1. And if he's behind us, it's going to be a negative number. If he's in front of us, it's going to be a positive number. And if he's on either side of us, it's going to be a 0. So let's take a look. We'll start it up. He's in front of us. Almost dead. Oh, let's open up the console so you can see it a bit better. So he's almost dead center in front of us. So let's turn to the side a bit. So it's still positive. We'll turn a bit more. Okay, now it's negative, so he's behind us. So we, we can use this to simply just check to make sure that he's not behind us by making sure it's not a negative number. So we'll check the distance, make sure it's below 2.5. And then we're going to check the direction. And we'll want to make sure it's a positive number, so it's a greater than zero. Invent those. And let's go try it out. So I'm way back here. I hit F. It's not losing any help. Let's move in closer still far away. So he's losing health. Let's just turn around. He's behind us. Not losing any health. Great. So let's turn him back on. And start it up. And so we're just charging in. Now you notice you can attack as fast as you can press the F key. So we should put some sort of cooldown on our attack. Let's add that next. So we'll open up Mono Development again. We're going to go up to where we have our variables and we're going to make two more. We'll just make them public for now. So we'll public, we'll make them both floats. Uh, we'll call one attack timer. And the other one we'll call cooldown. So our start method, we'll assign a value to both of these right now. So attack, all thumbs today, we'll set it to zero. We have one too many T's up here. We're going to set our cooldown. Uh, let's start it off at two seconds. Don't forget the F. Or the equals. The way we want this to work is if the player attacks, it sets the cooldown timer. 
and he has to wait till the cooldown timer expires before he can attack again. So let's set that up in the update function. The first thing we're going to want to do is check to see if the attack timer is greater than zero. So if attack timer is greater than zero. Now if the attack timer is greater than zero, we're going to want to subtract time dot delta time. So attack timer negative equals time dot delta time. So every frame that the attack timer is greater than zero, it gets reduced by the time it took to render that frame. Now in certain instances you could end up with the attack timer being below zero. So let's take care of that right now. So if attack timer is less than zero, we'll set the attack timer to equal zero. Now when the player presses the F key, we'll want to check to see if the timer is equal to zero, and if so, then we'll let them attack. So we'll say, if attack timer is equal to zero, then we're going to let them attack. So let's try this out. Actually, before we try this out, let's set the cooldown. So we're just going to say attack timer equals cooldown. So every time we attack, the attack timer gets set to cooldown, which is two seconds, and then it just keeps decreasing every frame until it reaches zero. Again, and let's attack. Let's select Evil QB. Let's turn off his AI script again. Select our player so we can keep an eye on our attack timer. Let's hit play. We'll run towards him. When we hit F, we'll notice now that we have the little cooldown timer. And he lost 10 health. So if we sit there and repeat, repeatedly hit F, we notice it doesn't go off constantly. So now let's take a look at our script and figure out how we're going to implement this for our evil cube. Now for our evil cube, it's going to be pretty simple. We can use the exact same script except we're not going to want this part here where it checks to get the key. We'll just have it run strictly off the timer. So let's go make another script. Make another C sharp. We'll call this enemy attack. Open it up. Rename the class. Then I'm just going to go into the player attack. I'm just going to copy everything. And paste it in. Now we're not going to want this part here. Later on when we come through and we start refactoring everything, uh, we'll be combining a lot of these scripts so the player attack and the enemy attack will be combined as one, the same as the enemy health and the player health. So let's save that. We'll take it, drag it up to our enemy QB, select the enemy QB, make sure it's attached. Let's also put on the enemy AI. I uh, want we'll the Assign the target, and now I just realized that well, we'll set his cooldown to two seconds too while we're here, but we're not going to want to find his enemy health, we'll want the player health. I believe that's why I've called it player health. And again, mono development isn't doing the auto complete, but that's okay, we know what it's called. We'll just make a quick check to make sure there's no errors. Now we'll start it up. Now we're just going to stand here and let him hit us, make sure it's working. There we go, we lost 10 health. 